Hi everyone, welcome back to Dentazen. Now if we look at enamel, it is made up of enamel rods within which we have calcium hydroxyapatite crystals. So enamel is one of the most mineralized structures of tooth. But there are some areas in enamel which are less mineralized. That means their mineral content is less compared to other areas. And these areas or these structures are known as hypocalcified structures of enamel. Hypo means less, calcified means their calcium content is less. And that is the topic for today's video. These structures are also known as hypo hypomineralized structures of enamel so for your theory exam you can get a long question as hypocalcified structures of enamel or what are the hypomineralized structures of enamel let's see now when we look at enamel under the microscope we can see all these structures but all of them are not hypocalcified so which ones are incremental lines of red shears neonatal line enamel lamellate tuft spindles and dentino enamel junction can be the hypocalcified structures of enamel so let's see how to write for your exam so before moving for the quickly subscribe to dentals and if you have not done that till now as we keep making such interesting videos for you also hit on the bell icon so that you remain notified about new videos so the hypocalcified structures of enamel are incremental lines of red shears neonatal line enamel lamellae enamel tufts spindles and dentino enamel junction let's talk about them one by one first as the word says lines so these are the lines present between increments that is parts of enamel so what are these lines these lines represent the successive a position of enamel that means enamel is deposited in layers in increments with a weekly rhythm and in between these increments we can see these lines which are known as incremental lines of red shears so when can we see these lines when we will prepare the ground section of the tooth so they are seen both in the longitudinal as well as cross section or horizontal section of the tooth now under the different lights they can give different colors so they appear as brownish bands when seen in transmitted light in microscope and they appear blue bluish white when seen in reflected light in microscope and where are they seen in the enamel so when we prepare the longitudinal section so these lines are seen as series of lines as we can see here these are the series many lines so they are also known as tri of red shears tri means lines and they are surrounding the tip of the dentine so this is dentine and this is the tip of the dentine so these lines are surrounding the tip of the dentine now when we look at the cross section in the cross section these lines appear as concentric circles or concentric rings concentric means these lines or rings have common center so these are the diagrams for incremental lines now why these lines are formed because of changes in the calcification so the reasons can be the variations in the calcification rhythm of enamel variations in the organic structure or periodic bending of enamel rods so where there are bending we can see these lines next is neonatal line neonatal so newborn so this line up is actually like incremental lines of red shears but it is a very prominent line as we can see here it is a thick line or enlarged incremental line of red shears so why it forms this is formed because of the changes that take place at birth so because of the great changes at birth so that's why the enamel which is formed before birth that is prenatal pre means before natal means birth is different as we can see in the diagram also is it different from the enamel which is formed after birth post means after or natal means birth so this neonatal line is present between prenatal enamel and postnatal enamel so what is happening at birth why these two enamels are different there are two things which are happening there are abrupt changes in the nutrition and environment because of which the enamel which is formed before birth that is prenatal enamel is better than the postnatal enamel why prenatal enamel is better because it is forming in the fetus which develops inside the develops inside a well protected environment of the mother's body and also in the mother's body it has adequate supply of all the essential nutrients so these two factors that is environment and nutrition are pres better before birth that is why prenatal enamel is better than the postnatal enamel next is enamel lamellae lamellae the word says lamellae means leaf like structure so these are the leaf like structures as we can see in the diagram they are starting from the enamel surface and going towards the dentino enamel junction they are going towards the dentino enamel junction so why these lamellae are formed these dark structures are seen because of the if the enamel rods are passing across the planes of tension so what will happen there is tension those rods will not get proper calcium so they will get poorly calcified rods and they will appear as dark areas in the microscope 
secondly they can also form due to severe disturbance if there is severe disturbance there will be formation of crack in that region of the enamel which later gets filled with organic material so we can say that these enamel lamellae have more of organic component and very little mineral content less calcium that's what these are called as hypomineralized structures now these lamellae can be of three types type a when these lamellae are made because of the poorly calcified rod segments passing across planes of tension so their calcium content is less so they can be seen these lamellae can be formed in the enamel before or after the eruption of tooth now type b are the lamellae within which we have the degenerated cells so from where these cells are coming so only if these lamellae are formed before eruption because before eruption of the tooth this enamel may be surrounded with the cells of enamel organ and the cells of connective tissue and if the crack forms at this stage these cells of enamel organ may go inside these lamellae and later on they degenerate so these lamellae contain degenerated cells and what if the cells of connective tissue go inside these lamellae so if the cells of connective tissue goes they can form cementum there so in the type b lamellae cementum can form what are type c then so these are those lamellae those cracks which are filled with organic matter which is coming from saliva so when can that happen when the tooth is erupted so type c are seen after eruption of tooth and they are the most common type of out of three so here in the diagram we can see that type a are restricted to enamel that is they remain within enamel whereas type b and type c can cross the dentino enamel junction and can go into the dentine so type b and type c may reach into dentine now coming to tufts so like enamel lamellae these are also defects or imperfections faults in the enamel structure they resemble tuft of grass their appearance as we can see here is similar to tuft of grass so they are called enamel tufts now if we look at their direction it is different from enamel lamellae enamel lamellae are arising from enamel surface going towards dentino enamel junction but enamel tufts are starting from dentino enamel junction they are starting from here and going towards the enamel surface but they are not going till the surface they are just extending up to one fifth to one third thickness of enamel so this picture that their appearance similar to tuft of grass is erroneous that means it's not correct why because actually when we are seeing this section under the microscope it is made up of multiple planes of the enamel so in multiple planes these imperfections are actually starting from different regions of the dentine and they are also directed in different directions they are curving in different directions so when all these planes are joined together and seen as one thick section as we are seeing here so all these defects seems they are arising from one point like the tuft of grass but actually they are not starting from one point so that is why this picture is incorrect because they are not arising from single area but they are actually ribbon like structure so why this tuft like appearance comes when we look at thick sections under low magnification of microscope because in that case the imperfections which are lying in the different planes and also they are curving in different directions they all get projected into one plane they all are are seen together into one plane under the microscope so they are seen best in the cross sections of the tooth and they are developed their development is because of changes in the direction of group of rods leading to spatial condition adaptations adaptations within the spaces which are available in the enamel so under scanning electron microscope they appear as tubular structures tubule like structures having cross striations as we can see here they may have cross striations transmission electron microscopy has shown that the center of the tufts may contain plate like structures coming from dentine another study revealed that they may have needle like crystals and some amorphous or granular material within them so all of these things show that they have less mineral content and more organic component so the major organic component major protein is 13.17 kd protein special protein called tough protein has been located in these regions next is spindles as the word says they look similar to spindles that means like a spindle they are thickened at their end as we can see in the diagram as well so what are these enamel spindles they are the processes of odontoblastic cells these odontoblastic cells their processes have moved 
into the enamel they have crossed the dentino enamel junction passed across the dentino enamel junction and they have gone into enamel so when this happens this happens even before the enamel and dentin are formed so before the hard substances are formed these processes go into that region so we can say if we talk about their origin that where they are coming from they are coming from odontoblast cells which are ectomesenchymal cells so we can say that these enamel spindles are ectomesenchymal in origin and it is different from the other structures of enamel which are arising within enamel they are ectodermal but enamel spindles are coming from ectomesenchymal odontoblastic cells so they are ectomesenchymal in origin so they are passing across dentino enamel junction going into enamel their length can be up to 25 micrometers and they are seen mostly in the mainly in the cusp tip region as we are showing this diagram in the cusp tip region and their direction is perpendicular to the dentino enamel junction and if we look at their appearance they appear as dark structures as we can see here their shape is spindle shaped or club shaped they can also said to be comma shaped structure now why do they appear dark because these processes which are present inside these areas they degenerate when we prepare the ground section and the space that is left gets filled with air and this air appears dark in transmitted light and when we look at them in transmission electron microscope it is seen that they may have needle like crystals with some amorphous or granular material may be present so don't you think their structure is similar to enamel tufts yes that is why like tufts they are also hypomineralized structures last is the junction which is present between dentin and enamel so this junction is scalloped what is the shape it is a scalloped junction that means it is in the form of scallops or curves now why this junction is like curves and where are the curves so the convexities of these curves these convexities are towards the dentin and if we look at the concavities of this scalloped junction they are towards the enamel so convexity is towards dentin concavity is facing enamel now this junction is curved and it is not a straight straight junction because if it will be straight junction then the surface area between enamel and dentin will be less so it is not a straight junction but when it is a curved junction the surface area between enamel and dentin increases which gives a firm attachment to enamel with dentin so this is a scallop junction which gives firm hold to enamel over dentin why enamel requires firm hold over dentin because enamel has to bear masticatory stresses so it needs to have a strong connection with dentin so where this junction will be more prominent more pronounced where these curves will be most pronounced in the occlusal areas as we have drawn in this diagram in the cusp tip region why because these are the areas where the masticatory stresses are highest so this junction is preformed pre means before it is formed even before the hard tissues enamel and dentin have formed and when enamel and dentin will form later so the crystals of enamel and dentin will go there and get mixed in the dentino enamel junction so compared to enamel and dentin the mineralized component of this junction is less so it is less mineralized compared to enamel and dentin that is why it is hypomineralized it is incremental lines of regius neonatal line lamellate of spindles and dentino enamel junction so if you get these questions as separate short notes we have already covered them in separate videos in detail you can check those videos and if you get your long question as hypocalcified structures of enamel then you can write this answer as we have discussed in this video so that is all for this video if you really enjoyed the video do tap on the like button and share the video with your friends keep watching keep learning and keep smiling good luck for your exams see you in the next video till then take care bye bye